Welcome back to another episode of Key Factors Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Jones, and we are sponsored by ReviewMyMortgage.com, the largest index of mortgage programs in the nation. And the past couple of episodes um, have been very insightful in regards to uh, what's going on with the realtors and the attack on them. We had uh, guests talking about uh, different types of marketing tactics that you can use, especially using humor in your business to grow your business. Um, and lately I've been hearing a lot of chatter about a crash, a crash in 2024 to be, uh, exact. And I brought two friends along to, uh, help me, um, navigate through all of this minutia. So I'm going to introduce my guests and let them tell themselves about you, uh, themselves. And, uh, then we'll get right into this. So, uh, if you are listening, if you're watching, you get something out of this, like, subscribe, share with a friend, um, even hell, leave a review on podcast, Apple podcast. It helps tremendously. So without further ado, let me introduce my first guest, which is Alan Corona. Alan, how's how you it doing? going? Mike? How's it going? Good. Thanks for having me here, man. Excited. I've been seeing you all the time on YouTube, man. Follow you for quite some time and finally get to be on the podcast. Now you're a part of it. Yeah, baby. I'm part of it, man. Appreciate That's right. That. Appreciate um, that. So the next guest is Michael Schultz. Michael, what up, dude? What up, man? How Good you? to see you again. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Yeah, I know we've both been busy and everything, but it's been uh, been an interesting year, to say the least. Absolutely. But uh, man, pumped to be here, excited. Absolutely. Um, you know, if I get to doing the Ricky Bobby thing, just yeah, maybe, maybe just wink at me a little bit. I'll put my hands up. Yeah. <laughs> and, and those of you that are out there that are just listening to the audio on Spotify or Apple Podcast, if you close your eyes, you may think that I have a super special guest on. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, um, I won't get into that. Uh, but guys, tell us who you are, what you're about, um, so the folks listening know why they should listen to the things that you guys are about to say. Who who wants to go first? I, I can go first. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, my name is Michael Schultz. I've been doing this for almost 13 years. April, in fact, will be 13 years. Um, local guy here in town. I was born in Florida, but you know, got over here as soon as I could. Got yeah. to Texas as soon as I could, even though. <laughs> Either now Florida is just as free as we are, <laughs> yeah. if not a little bit more. So who knows? I might end up back over there. I already own a house over there. I can just go back. There and you forth. go. So, but um, but yeah, I've been doing this for a long time, man. Um, I got in the business right in 2011 when stuff still wasn't fully back in, in right in full swing. Yep. From the 08 crash, um, you know, got my license. I think I gave the company I was with two weeks notice. And there said, you go. Hey, I'm gone, and I got my license in 32 days. So. <laughs> I, I found a way to kind of I say this on the podcast, but I befriended some people at Trek and just annoyed them every day, a few yeah. times a day until I think they just pushed my file through and was like, let's get rid of this guy. You know, he <laughs> stamped your license. You got to do go. it sometimes. Yeah. I believe so, it. So did it and then just started out at a little mom and pop brokerage in Bernie. And I mean, it's Century 21, but small office. Sure. I was literally, it was me and the receptionist. She doesn't know the questions I have. No. You know, she knows some things from just dealing with all this work. So it's like, okay, I gave it six months, no broker help, no nothing. I was like, okay. And I was really good friends and close with Mike Holloway at the time. I grew okay. up with his kids at school. We went to Reagan and 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 just were super close. And I valued his opinion, his experiences. And he was like, hey, go to go to Cobalt Banker. Went there, super corporate for me. You know, I did six months there. I feel like I had six months, six months, six months, but I found my groove when I went to Keller Williams Luxury right after there. I started doing some luxury deals off the bat after, you know, really doing nothing for the first year. I think I might, it's, it's funny when I tell people this, you know, I've been in the business journal the last nine years in a row for being one of the top 20 luxury agents in San Antonio. My, one, one more time with that one, just in case for the people in the back. In the top 25, San Antonio Business Journal, I'll give a little call. There you go, there you go. Um, <laughs> past nine years, I'm super proud of that. I love Absolutely. the fact of that. You know, like I, I, I love helping families. I love finding, you know, investment properties or flip properties, whatever it may be. But I just like walking that stage, getting my little, you know, crystal ball of, a, yeah. of an award. And just feeling recognized, right? Like it's not even about anything else. It's like, hey, I'm on. I made this list. So when the movers and shakers in town are opening that magazine, because you know they That's are, right. they're looking at there, and I'm boom. I'm the youngest one, and I keep creeping up the list. I love you it. Know? So this past year I was number nine, and Impressive. hopefully I'm in four or five or whatever. But the first year I made it, Mark, I was like, this is a joke, and I deleted the email. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way. I was like, I did eight. Minutes, you know, this is like right my here. third year selling real estate. I was still trying to find my groove and everything. And I did like 8.6 million. I was like, there's no way I'm on this list. Like, no, nah. deleted it. And then I got it again. So I forwarded it to my manager. I was at Sotheby's at the time. Yeah. She's like, no, no, you're on it. 
oh man okay so like i was exactly and back then they were doing top 25 so i was i was number 25 baby hey, I that's, was on okay. there. that's all that counts like once they got Maybe me in the door they, they can't get rid of me now i'm just gonna climb that list but it's been really good man i'm really really good i found my niche which is you know luxury houses and ranch sales so i deal with people who who are buying these bigger properties more expensive properties and they're also buying investment properties you know so they may have a portfolio of this ranch, this farm, this house they live in full time. They may have a, a house along the coast, the sure. Airbnb, things like that. So I've been involved in every aspect of that. Or they may buy three or four houses at a time, you know, between two or three hundred, flip it and sell it for five or six. It yeah. just I, I, get, I get by doing the higher end market, I get to do everything underneath it as well. Absolutely. So it, yeah. it's it's been great for me. Yeah, I'm feeding my team and everything as well. And a lot of folks believe that um once you make that transition into luxury, that you don't fiddle with the lower priced homes yeah, not, and i so find that that is so much of a myth i mean i i work uh and i'm close friends with uh robert elder and their mm -hmm. crew they take what they can get oh yeah you know now mind you of course they're going to take the luxury listings just Absolutely. like you 100 percent. but it shows their spectrum of what they do and their tenacity to take anything because they are the experts you are the expert right. in what you do you know you know for a while we would post everything we sold mm -hmm. you know hey just sold this or just sold cards whatever it may be and i noticed our our interaction and activity on social media was just dropping when i'd post something like that and yeah. so i don't post them anymore but now I have where it's like I got to figure out a happy medium because then I if I post just the cool stuff, you know, if I post the the million dollar listing TV type stuff, I'll get approached by people. Oh, hey, you know, I I would have called you and working but, working with me anyways because they, they'll miss on other properties. So we'll get together and, and work. But at first they'll say, hey, I, I would have called you, but you only do this stuff. Yeah. It's like, no, I don't. You don't know that last year I sold a. A lot for seventy five thousand dollars off Scenic Loop, and then we drove literally to Whitsit, Texas, to sell a house for thirty five thousand that should have been abandoned. There right? you go. So yeah, we literally do everything. I love everything that. under the sun, and it shows your expertise. And uh, now that we've heard from Alex Jones, I mean Michael Schultz, <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to shut me down. <laughs> love it, guys. So, um, Alan, tell yeah. us about yourself, brother. It was a big shoes to fill right there, man. Um, I've been in the industry for three years now. There you actually, go. two years and 11 months. Rising now. rock star. Yeah, coming up, coming up. Uh, I come from Laredo, Texas. I was born and raised there, graduated there, came to San Antonio as fast as I can as well. So uh, I always had a fascination with San Antonio and the history and everything. I'm pretty much a history buff too. You know? Love that. Um, nerd. <laughs> yeah, 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 common nerd. I love that. I love that. So uh Moved from San Antonio. I moved from Laredo to San Antonio. Been here for the past, I want to say, it's now nine years. Technically, three years. I used to be in the oil industry. Worked there for seven years. And then just recently in COVID, they laid me off. So I, was, I gave them seven faithful years. And they yeah. just say, hey, you, you're too expensive Lucky now. for them, huh? Yeah. Oh, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, it was it was kind of something that I grew to hate for quite some time now. You know, it's just I was young making money you know and i was like what else am i gonna do with my life at this right. point you know where, where can i take my my skills then until they let me go then i decided to you know jump into real estate that was the next thing for me and i've always been fascinated with it i i actually read rich that poor that everybody starts off Dude, with that book i feel that's Great my book. first book that i ever read cover to cover yeah yeah at <laughs> age like 22 <laughs> you know it took me some time because of my adhd but i got yeah. it done and then i got into podcasting uh, po i'm sorry listening to their to the audiobooks actually yeah so that helped me out um, and then that, that kind of just brought the fascination of, uh, you know, uh, real estate for me. I started off with a brokerage called RD Realty Group. Very good. I would been with them for the majority of my career. I actually just made a switch to real brokerage. Okay. Um, you know, so it's, um, I'm pretty excited of uh, what the future has for me. As far as my niche goes, I'm usually helping out people with the second time home buying so options, good. you know, trying to expand growing families. Uh, I've helped out a couple of investors in, uh, you know, in my career as well. And that's where I, ultimately where I want to end up, you know, investment side. Um, I don't want to be doing the whole real estate thing, selling for a long time. I want to get into education, you know, I helping people out. Not everybody's uh, poised or, you know, educated on finances. Sure. And, that, you know, be able to purchase a house and stuff like that or just managing money or managing portfolios and stuff like that. So It's want, not something that they teach in school. It's not. And it should be, you know, it should be. I mean, history is great, but what am I going to do with no, that? Man, you know, like, you know? Like my favorite classes in high school, you know, because... I feel like college, I did just what I had to do. And then we Same. were out the door, right? But high school, when we had electives, was awesome. Because my elective wasn't, like, I was bummed I didn't get shop. Right. You know, we didn't get stuff like that. But I took accounting. Mm -hmm. That's good. Took accounting, too. Yeah. Uh, economics. Those were my favorite classes. Everything else was like, pfft. Right. 
you know, I, I excelled in all that stuff, but it was like, I had no interest in it. It was like, I would do my work to where it, yeah. that was fine. And the other stuff was like, okay, here's where I'm putting my attention into. Absolutely. And I'm glad I did that because it, it, it set me up for what we're doing today. Absolutely. You know, doing some stuff and you like know, that. now I think uh, Elon Musk is pouring like a bunch of money into like a specialized tr school that just science, math, and that's know, pretty engineering. cool. So, and, and, and to, to your point, you mentioned, well, I mentioned they don't teach it in schools mm -hmm. and they should, but now thinking about it, I don't know if they should have teachers who are um, intending to give our kids the basics. It's like financial advice. Teaching could be the financial wrong advice yeah. to the kids and they're getting this incorrect. I don't know. Maybe it, it is how it should be. The, the financial stuff should be coming from the parents. Maybe the parents need to just step up a little bit more and start right. teaching them younger, True. fill them in on what's Some going on in their educated. life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, for me, my parents were super transparent as possible. Um, matter of fact, when it was time to go to college, I'm like, okay, I've got partial scholarship to play football, but I need money for the rest. My dad was like, well, you want to fill out that FAFSA form? I'm like, uh, okay, how do I do it? And he's right. like, here's my tax returns. Go ahead and knock that out. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. A little bit of fraud here. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I just didn't, I didn't know. And, right. and it was that transparent that I knew where my parents stood. I knew um, kind of what their goals were, what our income was. Mm -hmm. We weren't well off, um, but we weren't hurting, et cetera. So I think that transparency is is going to, to, to help all the way around. And that leads to the education piece that you were mentioning. Yeah which ties into the conversation that we're having today. Um, so to open it up, I want to get a take on, and I'm sure you guys view this topic the same way, but I'm going to play devil's advocate throughout this episode, gotcha. just so that we can get an, a, a different uh, perspective and make us think a little bit. Daunting question. When is the crash happening in 2024, guys? Who wants to start? It's not, it's not going to, yeah, I no, agree it's, it's not going to happen. I, I honestly think if we have a crash at all, it's going to be, it's going to be after 2024. I think 2025, maybe the end of it. Like, you know how we had the, the, the COVID pricing and things were skyrocketing. Rates were super low. I mean, I know I took advantage of that. You know, mm -hmm. we bought the house in Florida. I, I did a $1.2 million house yeah. at 2.7%. Yeah. I mean, it was like free money. I'm like, okay, yeah. you know, and we rented it out and did things like that and have made money off of it. But I honestly think we're going to see something like we saw in 22. Okay. When, you know, halfway through the year, it started trailing off and rates were going up and people mm -hmm. were starting to back down and, and do things. Now, I still sold a bunch of stuff sure. during, during that time. It was just a little bit slower. You know, and then being in the luxury market as well, too, or the ranch market, people are still buying stuff. You right. Know? And, and I, f I feel like if I go back and put everything pinned to paper – 85 to 90 percent of my deals are cash only anyways right. you know so i do a bunch of that stuff or their or their 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 portfolio loans you know doing other things like that and, and they're not your typical conforming conventional Correct. right and so they have some more freedom and doing things like that but i honestly think we'll get through 2024 i think it's gonna be a great year yeah you know not not saying hey i'm listening to these <laughs> these real estate influencers on social media because <laughs> i think that's garbage too Could you know be. all Could this be. other stuff but just talking to who i talk to like talking to you Talking to, you know, someone, because we share an office, Gold's in our office, you Absolutely. know, so I've got some friends in there, you just, cooler talk, right, we'll call yeah. it, you know, talking to some people who are on, obviously, a higher pay scale than I am, um, just from around the country, people I know from, you know, I, I, I've, I've sold homes to several of the USA executives, so, you know, just hearing their insight, different things right. like that, again, people over my my pay scale, um, who I feel like are going to be a little bit more smarter than me, a little bit more older than me, and, and have been around the block a couple of times, I feel like 2024 is going to be a fantastic year. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to have the beginning of 2025 be the same, you know, because I don't think they can be like, oh, 2024 is over. Boom. We're back at eight or nine percent or sure. whatever we're going to be at. I think it's going to be that slow roll back into it again. But somewhere in the middle of 2025, middle to late, I think we're, they may start going back up again. <laughs> I, think they're gonna, I think they're going to be so good in 2024 because I think it's an election year. I know Absolutely. some other people go, hey, the president, oh, yeah. the president cannot dictate that. It, it's not That's the president. Okay. It's Someone's technically wants. not the president. Right. It, it's more so what leads up to that in hopes that 
the president will remain or be Correct. replaced. Correct. Mm-hmm. And you see, it's all going to be market specific, really. San Antonio has always been strong. Our economic Go ahead, brother. Yeah. You know, is strong. You know, so I, we have a lot of military, mm-hmm. medical, you know, all that keeps our economy going here in San Antonio. Travel. Right. And then not only that, all the developments, all the companies pushing to Texas, you know, Absolutely. and just on the outskirts, you know, towards New Braunfels, San Marcos, we're getting all that developed too. So it's just people are, are willing to commute a little bit longer to get a, you know, a home out there and then come back into the city for right. work and stuff like that. So I don't see San, we'll see, we're seeing it now pull back on the prices, right? But a crash, I, I highly do not see that. Right. I, I now, mean, Microsoft came in and paid $54,000 yeah. an acre in, oh, yeah. in, in an area where everything's going for 20 an acre. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're, they're obviously betting, and they're a lot smarter than I am too. They're obviously betting, hey, we're going to come in and do this, pay this much to make sure we get it and, and build out our suite and then have now executives here and all this other stuff here. Correct. So there's, I, I feel like little signs like that are all mm-hmm. over the place. Yeah. And I was going to, you know, I'm, I'm glad he said it because it's it's true. Just like in tw- 2008 crash and, and moving through there, we had foreclosures, we had all these things, but we were still one of the strongest states to Absolutely. come out of this. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know? Yes. Oh, yeah. And and the reason why we're having most of this conversation is because you look in the media and it's hard for the layman, even the novice realtor to understand and navigate through everything that's being told to them, especially Mm -hmm. if it's from someone that they know and respect, like a Grant Cardone figure or any of those folks that may or may not have a hidden agenda behind it. Um, The concept of location being uh, super important, I believe you are accurate in that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe that Texas, like you mentioned, we have not seen any kind of downturn other than when 2008 occurred. It actually took a two year period for us to feel it in 2010. And then it shot right back up. If you look at a chart and, and, and do a zoom out, um, you've got places like California that are constantly going to be riding that wave, that roller coaster. But again, taking a snapshot back, it's a constant upwards trajectory mm-hmm. on that. Um, real estate is the thing that gets people out of the uh, cyclical poverty situation. And we're faced with having to educate renters, consumers, um, sellers, all of that in a short period of time, how do we go about doing that? What are the things that we talk about with them? Um, and we'll roll into that a little bit later, but I want to get into the concept of what is being told in the media and what you should believe, what you shouldn't believe. I mean, are you guys seeing anything on the news? Are you seeing anything on the bulletins, YouTubers? And, and a lot everything, of it is, is clickbait yeah. for sure. Yeah. And everything, you know, a lot of it's clickbait. A lot of it's, hey, read this, or it's, it's worded just enough to where I feel like they say they can't come back and get in trouble for what they wrote, you know, or have to redact it or write the apology. But thing if they're right, on. they're going to say I was right. Yeah. But yeah. if they're right, they'll say I was <laughs> right. But a lot of it's like, okay, we're not breaking it down into like micro markets. Correct. Like, in and in in, you know, if you want to say a macro market would be, you know, even the state and then an even higher markets, the country. Right. All these statistics are showing you are are nationwide. Right. You know, so they're saying, hey, like the mass exodus from California, because half of everyone moved from California. I was looking at numbers the other day are going, you know, some some a small percentage are going other places, but the majority, the two biggest pieces, and it's almost directly in half, is Florida and Texas. Absolutely. Yep. And so the, the the little ones are going other places, but like that makes the prices in California come down a lot. If everyone's mass exodus, mass exodus, they're going to have obviously flooding the market with listings. So mm-hmm. you know it, it's it, they're going to have a longer time on market, things like that. Prices are going to come down. So I mean, they're really not looking at anything like that, right? You know, I'm I'm still selling luxury homes in Aqua Springs, Dominion, mm-hmm. um, Oakland's um, condos downtown yep. over the Riverwalk and penthouse stuff. And we're negotiating again, but the prices were just so inflated from COVID that they're still selling. So the market's not dropping. No. You know, I feel like I was just doing an update for a client last week where I said, look, sales are down, but down by like one or two percent. You know, like we Correct. if we had a hundred sales December of last year, we have we have ninety this year. Okay, so ten homes didn't sell. Yep. Okay, but those ten homes are gonna sell in January, right? right? Like in December's a weird month to look at anyway, because right. of travel. Like we'll still we'll still contracting, showing and things like that, but it's just a little slower. And when, um, when people mention that prices are coming down, 
No, I, and I'll, they're I'll tell them, no, they're going back to normal. Val- yeah. Right. Yeah. They're not talking values are coming down. We're no. talking sales list prices because Correct. they were already overinflated thinking that we could get that price. And matter of fact, they could in the last couple of years, but now fast forward to reality, yep. compile that with higher interest rates, yep. the affordability of it just doesn't make sense. Right. But at the end of the day, these folks aren't going to give away their property no. at risk of losing their current low payment to go no. and trade it in for a higher equal property, Correct. higher payment. Correct. So like, here's, a, here's an example. I, sure. We just closed on one mm, a week and a half ago, mm-hmm. two weeks ago, maybe most. But I went to him or he came to me as a referral. I sold a three and a half million dollar property on the lake. Okay. They were friends. It was on Canyon. Three days, five full offers, one, uh, four full, full price offers. One was lower. One was way lower. From a neighbor just trying to get it. But I had that many offers on a three and a half million dollar property oh, yeah. at the lake, sold it in 72 hours, you know, easy deal. We had a lease back for free, everything else. So she had time to get out. So I was referred to one of her friends and he was like, Oh, well, she did that. And then, well, you're not on the lake, you're not this, you know, you're 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 two different products here, right? Right. But, but still a luxury home nonetheless. It was in the Oakland. Yep. Um, I ran numbers for him after seeing the house because on a luxury deal, I will always go to the appointment. Take all my notes, all my photos on my iPad and my phone. Take one of my agents with me to, to to help with that. So I'm talking to the agent or the the seller, not just staring at my iPad right. all the time. <laughs> and um, I come back and tell him, "Hey, flat out, your house is worth one six fifty. It got irate. No, it's not. Blah blah blah. Well, he built it twenty two years ago. It was mm. the you know original house in the neighborhood, the biggest house in the neighborhood, the biggest lot in the neighborhood. So he had all this stuff going for him. Sure, but all original." Now, pristine condition. I don't know how he kept the house that nice, but like <laughs> everything was nice. Okay. So probably ex military or something. Uh, uh, builds nursing homes across the state. There, <laughs> there you so, go. Yeah. Sanitation, baby. Sanitation. Yeah. So, so I tell him 1650 and he loses his mind. It says, no, it's worth 1950. And I said, no, I mean, I uh, respectfully agree to disagree. <laughs> right. You know, like, I'm at the point in my career now where like I don't have to take every deal, no, especially no. if I know it's going to not waste my time, but like waste my other clients' time. Because if I'm doing so much for this one person and they're yeah. not being realistic, then, then that's unfair to my other clients, right? right? Or unfair to my kids and my wife because I'm on the phone with them constantly all the time trying to get a price reduction or whatever. Um, after thinking about it, after we did photos, he called me back and we lowered it $120,000 from there. So we're at a million eight thirty five ish, a million eight thirty. Yeah. And the market sees that. The market goes, sees that. Well, we weren't even on the market yet. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. we weren't on the market yet. So thank God. But then, then I sell it in two weeks. But I sell it for one six fifty. Hmm. Are you weird. Them? Weird, right? That's yeah. as high as they'll go. He's tired of arguing with them back and forth. We get it done. But then he's like, "Well, I'm not making any repairs. I'm not doing any of this stuff." I'm like, "Well, hey, you're. I'm not trying to argue with you, but your AC is 22 years old. Yeah. And this man. is that, and this is that. You know, there are some some things here. I wouldn't fix anything. Then end up fixing a bunch of just small stuff. So thank you, but." I'm sure he just, a lot just to too. show you like, Hey, the height, and this is where I'm going with this, this whole story. So if I get on a tangent, just smack me in the back of the head, but the highest price, in that <laughs> go, go gadget arm. the <laughs> highest price in that neighborhood was $1.3 million a year before. So wow. a year before, right. when, when we were, you know, it was pre June, July, it was like an April, May closing for that one. So the, the rates were still low. Everything top was great, of the market. Pumping out. Yep. Sold for top of the market a little bit over ass, like thirty five thousand, forty thousand over ass. So right, not not too terrible as some that we've seen have gone a couple hundred Absolutely. over ass in that price point. But a great comp nonetheless. Now we had extra land, we had extra this, but I sold his house, the highest price home in the neighborhood, for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars over the nearest comparable. Mm-hmm. In a down market or whatever right. they want to call it. It, it wasn't what he wanted, but he was seeing all these COVID prices for That's, years. There you go. But my thing to him was, we I still made you this much money over and above and beyond this other house. And in and that when case, he, the, you, he doesn't see it till the end. But then he's like, "Oh, uh, yeah, you're you know you're right." Like, and <laughs> you should have been a rock star in his mind. Yeah, but he's already referred me to more people after the whole because thing because of the media. It downplays mm-hmm. your expertise in the data that you provide to him oh, yeah. versus the, the emotion yeah. that he brings to the table. Right. If that makes yep. sense. Yep. Um, Not so, only that, if you got people going on Zillow and stuff and seeing what their house is yeah. worth, that, that valuation model is like off. So it, it is. It <laughs> is. It, it, it's a gimmick. Um, and it just kind of like uh, credit karma. You've got to yep. have a score uh, to give some reason mm-hmm. why Correct. you're paying for it. Yeah. Correct. You know? Um, so. 
I want to kind of break down the concept of what would cause a crash. We're going to play hypothetical um, and break down the basics of what it would take to create a crash. So the first thing, in my opinion, is unemployment. Correct. Right? So I believe I got this statistic here. 3.2 right now, 3.6. Uh, nationally at least where the heck did i put that unemployment is data covid covid 22 followed by robotic birds yeah, yeah. <laughs> dropping the covid virus yeah. throughout the country i think we're at four point where did i put that sucker we're somewhere around four percent you know what here i'll look it up i have it right here we are at 4.1 percent mm. um and that is in texas Okay. I don't see that spiking. Um, as a matter of fact, even if it spiked, let's say half the people that own homes lost their job. They have so much equity in their property that the next thing would be, okay, let's see how much it is to sell it. But then you have this caveat of if we do actually sell this property, where do we go to live? So they're going to then face the issue of I'm going to trade in this low payment at this low rate to get the capital because I can't make my payment or I'm scared I might not be able to make the payment because nothing's saying that they can't get another job, maybe have some cash reserves. Hey, maybe they're late on their mortgage a couple of times to then trade it in for the equivalent that is now a higher payment, whether you're buying or renting. It just doesn't jive, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? I will never sell that house. So I got the my first house in 2021 at like 3.2%. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will never let that go. I'll, I'll figure something out. I'll rent it out. Rent, well, currently is rented out. Right. Making some great money on the there you payment. Go. Just 1100 I'm renting out for 1650 So like, there you go. You know, it's perfect. I will never let go of that house. I'll figure something out, you know, creative, you know, mm-hmm. to be able to, cover that if I happen to lose my job or whatever the case is. Since right. I need to get into an apartment, I'll do so. But this is where you have to be versed in finances. And, you know, you need to, typically everybody has to be six months in that, you know, in reserves. reserves yep. You have to, but that's not the case with everybody. Some people right. only have a thousand dollars in their bank account. Correct. Like, usually, right. So you you need to be able to understand um, the repercussions of you, if you lose your job, this, this is where we come in and educate people also like, don't buy a house if you're not ready, if you're not situated with this whole, you know, blanket as far as right right? but some people they need to move and they have to buy the house no matter what right Right. so but you kind of stay you stay in communication with them to educate them and continue you know giving them information on how to you know protect yourself and stuff like that and that's why they have relationships like you too you know so you guys are the numbers number geeks right so supposed to be (laughs) you're supposed to be so (laughs) so definitely educating everybody on that sense but no for as far back to your question um i'll definitely won't ever sell that one i'm I, i bought it for two hundred thousand. No, it's two fifty. I could sell for two fifty. The comps in that area support that, and, and that's within a two year period. Correct. Right. So it's insane. And so what is that? A uh, uh, almost a hundred hundred and fifty percent. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's I mean, not bad. You're the numbers guy, right? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, mental math is not my strong suit. But I got you. But definitely, uh, I I definitely will keep that one until you know, whew, until another one goes. Any thoughts on that? Because my next thing would be a recession, mm-hmm. which, in my opinion. We almost need one. Um, And the reason why I say that is because parlaying it with more data, we just hit a trillion dollars in credit card debt, just consumers Mm -hmm. together. What does that tell me? You can't blame me on that. Me neither, man. I still have a debit credit card. Like an Amex pay you off every month. I got that Zolve. Holler at Zolve. I got my first credit card at 36 years old. No way. Yeah, so it had to get secured, though. It's only got $500 (laughs) on it. I believe that. (laughs) They give me one tank of diesel. (laughs) I got to pay it off. Okay, but. (laughs) Uh, But I'm working on it. I was was just, was the, 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 the aspect of like. If I don't have it, I'm not going to buy it. Right. I'll pay cash for it. But then it's it's like I, I'll finance vehicles, all this other stuff. And then you learn that that doesn't count as much as, as no. like having a house or even the credit card on there. The revolving. You know I mean? yep. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take my own advice now and go That's get a right. credit card. That's right. I'm not going to pay 1.6 million. My wife's cash got like right seven, now. but I've got, I've, I've got my first one. <laughs> Authorized user. That'll help. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, what does that look like? Like we have a trillion dollars in debt right now. Yep. If that crumbles, what what does that look like? You think the I government's mean, not again? That, that that's happen, something think, that, you know? in my opinion, 
would still not affect the housing market right. simply because those cards are unsecured debt that mm -hmm. can be charged off and written off by the creditors. Right. Um, and would it be bad? Sure it would, but not affecting the housing market mm -hmm. at all. I mean, mm -hmm. let's say you have hard times. Are you going to pay your credit card or are you going to pay your mortgage? I'm paying my mortgage. Right Every now. single time. 100%. Yeah. Um, even though, like, for example, Texas, we are there's nothing to toot our horns about when it comes to credit scores average. We're at like 660 average credit score for San Antonio. But yet we are the lowest foreclosure rates. Why? Because Texans are known for paying their mortgage regardless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Come so and come and take it. Yeah. <laughs> and and and. A recession, in theory, would cause a crash crash in all of the markets. But in this case scenario, I just think that inflation of things that are not calculated in the inflation are not being noticed by the consumers. More people are eating out left and right. Mm -hmm. Restaurants raise their prices. Oh, yeah. They still eat out left and right. Yeah. Uh, Christmas comes around. Still spending. Still spending. Mm -hmm. Where does it go? On the credit cards, right? Um, but again, back to that point, I don't see that affecting the housing market prices in any way, shape, or form. So taking what we know about 2008, which I was not in the business, you weren't in the business, you weren't in the... I got in in 2012, you were in 2011, mm -hmm. you were 2021. I was being crowned right? homecoming king that, there you that go. year. <laughs> that's <you know>? awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Um Let's talk about what the difference was. What do you guys know about the crash of two, 20, uh, 2008? Subprime loans. Subpri you, yeah. The, you nailed it. Subprime loans, yeah. Uh, I mean, my first dose of that when I started getting into it, like actually researching it, yep. I saw the movie, the, the Big Short, you know? It's on the money. Yeah, it's on the money. Um, so they were giving loans out left and right to mm -hmm. babies. You know, people were using other people's social security cards. Um, they weren't even verified employment and stuff like that. So. Yep. I mean, now they have a lot of regulations in place to avoid that situation. It wasn't really a housing issue. It was, you know, the lending issue, I suppose, right? And right. you are on the money. It was a greed issue, mm -hmm. right? It was a greed issue on top of the fact that fraud was running amok. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even believe that they were doing fraud because it was acceptable, mm -hmm. Correct. you know? Um, that is the huge piece that is missing and all that we have here in addition to the inventory shortage. Mm -hmm. um, I've got some stats that we looked up uh, before. Let's see here. Inventory wise, we have uh, 2.7 months of inventory in all of Texas that is on the market. But then when we hone in and get a little bit more specific, San Antonio has 4.6 months and Austin has four months. Typically, they say the market shifts at six months plus in inventory mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. a now it's a buyer's market. We can wheel and deal and, and get prices dropped, et cetera. I, for one, believe that even if we had six months worth of inventory, it would be a little different because you now have sellers that are not enticed in any way to trade in that current rate <laughs> for the new rate. Right. Well, and, and not only that, Mark, but we have these sellers. So like, you know, I'd see it as a buyer's market or some of my clients right now, buyers and sellers think, hey, sure. we're in a buyer's market because... That they're negotiating or, you know, or they, you know, we had to come off a hundred thousand, 200,000, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, but that's not true either. Right. Like, that's a, uh, to me, that's like a, that's like a, uh, a false positive test, right? Preach. So it's, it, it, it's, it's no, you overpriced it because you still think it's 2021, even though we're two years later in the height of it, right. you know, you, you still think you're, you're looking back two years Yep. and you, you're, you're, you're picking and choosing when you're going to listen to Zillow and realtor.com and not, you know, all this stuff that's saying we're in a recession or it's coming or the market's tanking. Look how horrible it is. It's on fire, but you're still pricing it. You're, you're listening to that, but you're still pricing it up here. And then mm -hmm. during another conversation, you're picking which conversation you want to argue with. Me, Absolutely. Right? But, but we're not, we're not in a buyer's market where we're just giving the property away. No, we're, we're, we're bringing it back to reality, which by the way, reality is still higher than it was two or three years ago. It had this upward trajectory. If, you know, if you're looking at a graph or a chart, you've still been following this chart, even though the trop, the chart stabilized. Right. I don't know what chart you're looking at. Maybe you made it on, on your MacBook, but you're still looking at this chart <laughs> that, that goes up and you're not seeing the dip. And it's, 
I mean, look, it, it's a dip, right? right? But it's still higher than you were two to three years ago. Absolutely. So because it higher. dipped, right? Like, look at the stock market. Everyone will tell you, oh, play the stock market, put it in something safe for 10 years. Yeah, you'll see ebbs and flows, but you still make money. Correct. Right? Unless unless the company just tanked or something like that, right? Enron yep. type deal, whatever. Sure. But, Again, but still, based on fraud. Right. Year over year. Exactly. Year over year, you're still making money. What was the normal percentage rate? I think we, not percentage rate, the, the, the percent of 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 mo- your money back type thing, right? Or or, or a, a value add That's right. was what? Used to be like 4.6%. Well, shit. Last year. Oop, boop, boop, but you la- can last, shit all you want. But last don't year, shit on the floor. Yeah, but last year, <laughs> you know, last year, fuck, we were, we were going from a 4, per six, 4 to 6% increase in value every year. Mm-hmm. And in 21, we jumped, what was it like? On our neighbor, our national average is like forty percent in it value. Jumped tremendously. Cool. Correct. Well, you should have bought and sold then, right? right? But we're not. So now, now we've dropped. Let's say even ten percent. Mm-hmm. You're still at thirty percent more than it was worth in twenty twenty. And right? let let's say for whatever reason, guys, because we're just throwing numbers out that make sense. But let's say we're off by ten percent, and that initial thirty that he said Shit, is that's, twenty. Yeah, that's more than you're going to make on a on a on a bank investment. Any, you know, any way you look at it. That's yeah, exactly you're still correct. cashing out, man. You're still making the right decision. That's why it's, it, all these influencers, all this stuff, and and we can get into a little bit how disgusting they mostly are, but they are right about one thing: like invest in real estate. Whether right. you, even, even if it's just your own your your single home, right? You're still making a solid investment. Agree. You can rent. I've got an apartment complex I bought. Thank you. 2021 was really good Boom. to me. So I bought an apartment complex. We bought a beach house. Like you can still rent from me. Yeah. I'm not making you a deal. I'm going to, I'm going to profit off that. I'm not trying to be a dick, but I bought that for a reason. That was a business for me. That's right. Those both were businesses. So I'm going to, I'm still going to make money. Do you, do you want to buy or do you want to rent? Cause rent you're paying me. That's right. I feel like when you're buying it, you're paying yourself, right? Mm-hmm. I know you're paying the bank and whatever and you can, we can argue whatever point we want, but at the end of the day, you're still paying yourself. Correct. Because if I'm putting money in every month, here's two thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. But like on my house, so here I bought this house six years ago. Our payment was eighteen ninety something when we first got it. Now it's twenty one hundred dollars. Taxes went up, taxes, things like that. Sure. You know, my house is over doubled right. in six years. The little bit of it was the last couple of years, sure. But it was an older home. We remodeled a little bit, but we've doubled the value in it. Or oh, I'm sorry, over doubled the value. I can't go put $100,000 in the bank and six years later have 200 k There's no way. No. Matter of fact, the bank probably wouldn't even let you do that. No, if I had. Be. And it'll take 24 hours <laughs> well, to get your money. Like, the, <laughs> like right. the, 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 the down payment for the beach house. So I sold a ranch, made $306,000 on my commission. Okay. Okay. Burning a hole in my pocket. Mm-hmm. And then we'd always wanted a house in, in like over by Seaside, Florida on 30A. We now have one. But I took... All of that money and put it down. Reinvested. To get that right. To reinvest into that. Practicing what you preach. But for six months while we were looking, I think I made $13 in interest, guys. Yeah. Of the money sitting there, mm-hmm. allowing the bank to yeah. use your money. $13. That would to not even get me. That would not even buy me a meal at Saltgrass. Right. Okay. My house now that I've put that money into has now gone up 400 k in value. Yeah. That you could That'll tap into a lot when of you need. That will buy me a saltgrass Absolutely. franchise, right? Damn like, right. So it's true. So when you look at stuff like that, you just got to make the right decision. You got to partner with someone like one of us, or you know, in, in yourself, and 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 just make sure that there's someone helping you, right? Because we yeah. always weren't helped. I bought my first house in the in the recession in 2008. Okay, the neighborhood was giving great deals. There were you know incentives. It was a spec home. They did what I wanted. Moved some things around. It was a Dr. Horton. I mean, it was a great first house. But right. I bought that in the downturn. But we were booming business wise. I used to work for my parents' construction company and I was running all that, doing that stuff when we was a concrete company. Right. But we were blowing and going. I mean, our house stuff slowed down a little bit. Sure. But we did a ton of commercial. I don't know if you remember, but in 2008, I know we weren't in the business in the business. Right. But I was in the construction field. Commercial was still booming, going, dude. Still commercial going. was booming. You know, I know commercial slowing down now, but that I feel like that's a little bit of a mix of like, hey, it's 2023. We're working from home. COVID made us work from home. It worked. We're going to get into that. You know, but, but like, it was still going strong. So uh, my paycheck didn't decrease over that. And that's not to boast, but that's saying like, look, I took advantage and said, you know what? I'm tired of renting. I can get a deal on this thing now. Let me buy it. And, 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 and this is just a guess, but I believe you were on that trajectory because you had solid mentorship or someone oh, yeah. ahead of you that you saw 
that was doing the right thing or what you believed to be the oh, yeah. right thing, and you followed their footsteps. 100%. My parents were a, a huge help. And I don't mean like, hey, give me down payment or no. whatever, because we worked all that out with the builder. Mm -hmm. But just teaching me the fundamentals of this is how you run a business. This is what you do with the profits. It's, you know, all, all these things that taught me to be more business minded. They led by example. Yeah. The only thing I wish I would have done, man, you know, uh, what is it? Um, looking back is 2020, you know, Hindsight. whatever we call it. Hindsight's Hindsight. 2020. Yeah. Hindsight. Is I should have kept it. Yeah. You know, I sold it four years later, made 10 grand, whatever, not that, that big of a deal. But I had a friend that lived in the neighborhood too, and we sold hers another four years later. So she was there for eight. I was there for four. Mm -hmm. And she made like 180K. Yeah. Where I made 10. And I'm like, man, I should have honestly, dude, it was in, it was in shirt Cibolo. I should have like rented it out to someone in the military that mm -hmm. was going to take care of it. Cause I sold it when I got an apartment. Cause I was like, oh man, I'm not, what to you know, do. I'm brand new in the business. I freaked out. I mean, I need to keep my credit. I'm not going to let a late payment do this or that. And I was, cause I was just starting out selling real sure. estate. And that, that perspective, that mentality is what I believe is happening in the minds of many yeah. consumers. I, I, I moved out, got an apartment. I should have just moved out, got an apartment and put a renter in there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cause at least the mortgage is being covered. Absolutely. Yep. Even if I only made a hundred, two hundred dollars a month, but now they're paying my mortgage and I, I sell it four years later and make a hundred and something thousand dollars on it. Right? Correct. Or I still own it to this time today and I'm borrowing against it to buy something else. Right. And you see market conditions shouldn't dictate whether you buy or not. It should dictate your strategy, right? Yeah. 100%. Ooh, so preach. You, you need to be able to, you know, get creative with all these. And even now with the high interest rates, so much like yeah. financing, creative finance has been brought on and laws have been kind of changed or things are making it more attainable for people to, you know, buy a house now. So do, no matter what the market is doing, as long as you negotiate a, an amazing deal, you strategize on how to acquire it, you know, your finances are in order. Then you're. You, you, it's hard to. Real estate is a long term play, guys. Well, I mean, the play, real you know? estate. I think the rule of thumb is you don't even actualize any losses until you have to sell. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, if you're holding on to it, what have you lost? Hey, Mark, that's not devil's advocate, though. No, it's you know? not. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, it's not. Here's some devil's advocate. I should have held on to our investment properties longer than uh, we should, or than we did. We sold them all back in 2019. Held on to that. I was starting a new company. Um, so we had to have reserves and, and just money to make moves. And then we started flipping properties in 2020 or 2021. And then that market, it didn't completely dry up, but people shifted to buy and hold when we ended our flipping. Mm -hmm. And looking back on it, hindsight, we should have just kept them. But at that time, being younger, doing what we were doing, we saw the capital as something to use to leverage even more. It worked out for us, but like you said, mm -hmm. holding on to it in any situation, consumers believe that the housing market is similar to stock in the sense that you have to actualize your losses every time you look at it. Right. How often do you look at your value? other than when you pay your taxes. And that's if you pay your taxes separately from your actual yeah, mortgage say, payment. On, on some of the investment things we own, you know, we own, we got together with a group of us in the office sure. and they're, depending on what deal it is, there's 10 to 15 of us on a deal, right? Mm -hmm. The apartment complex, I think there's 10 or 11 of us and we all just put a bunch of money into sure. it. And however much money you put into it, that, that was your interest stake in it. Yeah. Um, I don't look at the value of any of that mm -mm. until we get our K-1s and looking at doing taxes into the year and protesting, you know, things like that. Absolutely. We look at it and I go back, okay, it's either we broke even or, hey, we lost a little bit, but that's I'm writing that off, things like that too. But I was gonna going to say, that, that should help because yeah. you, you've yeah. got to offset some of the income that that was made yeah. in that year as well. Um, and then back to the the concept of the shortage of inventory. I've got a, a chart up here. How uh, existing housing units relative to the population demand in the U.S., even though we've got four months of inventory here in San Antonio, uh, four months over in Austin, uh, what was it? Two point something nationally. We're still 3.2 million units behind right. <laughs> on what needs to be there for the demand mm -hmm. that's out there. Mm -hmm. it, it's crazy. And people think just because they said the feds are going to drop rates or drop the basis points 25, you know, three times next year. They don't understand that it's not going to be aggressively. It's not going to be a quick thing. It's going to be over time, and they're going to have to look at the reports uh, of you know the GDP. CPI, well, that, that's cool that, that stuff, you right? brought that up. So go ahead. You know, it, they can't bank on it going down. So actually, um, I was looking at some stats the other day. The first week of December, like two hundred ninety-eight homes sold, right? Mm -hmm. And then they announced that whole Fed's going to drop the rates and all that stuff. 
next week, following week, you know, it, it was up by 144 homes hmm. sold in San Antonio. So what happens? People, pat, you know, right now there's a lot of pent up buyer demand. Right. So they want to get into the market. As soon as they hear something about interest rates dropping, they act on it. Right. Right. So, you know, it, it's, it, it's going to definitely don't pay attention to the basis points and all that stuff. You can always get creative on our second home that we bought. Um, right now, we bought it for 332,000. Right now, that same home selling for 315, right? Right. But we bought down our interest rates, you know, and it's, we understand it's a long-term hold. So sure. my fiance and I, are, we're trying to acquire as many properties as we can to be able to rent them out and build up our portfolio, right? right. Something similar to you. I want to get mm-hmm. into, you know, commercial real estate and stuff like that. So, uh, we're, we're not worried. I'm not worried that they're selling the same house down the street for, you know, 15 K less. I right. know my house is appraised for X amount. I know eventually I'm going to get that value back. It's that's a 10 year hold for us, if anything. And anybody that's buying a house right now, I'm at least telling them you need to stay in it within, you know, five years, at least right. be able to combat these, you know, pullbacks or whatever the case is going to happen with the market. But if you, if you do happen to see that the market's going to go up in value, you're going to be getting an email from me. Hey, your value's up. Would you like to sell? What's going mm-hmm. on? What do you want to do with this you know, scenario? And from a consumer's perspective on, on what Alan just mentioned, rates, announcement, they're coming down a little bit. All of a sudden, transactions go up. Mm-hmm. What does that do to values, guys? It shoots up. They're going to go back up again. I mean, there you go. I'm, I'm telling people to buy down. They look at me like I'm stupid, but I'm like, you know, some of my higher end clientele, they get it. They don't care. They're doing this, doing that, right? They'll move money around, but... So my let's say the the more normal transactions like yeah. let's say anywhere from three hundred k to six hundred k, they're like no nah, that doesn't make any sense and I'm like no but they just drop rates once yep they're gonna drop them again yep if they do or whatever or how many times they do no matter if they drop rates or not though your value is still gonna creep up a little bit right Absolutely. so so the best thing for you is this house works for you right. You like it. It's where you want it. The location's a rock star location for where you want to be. You know, it just, everything aligns except that rate. Right. But you're qualified to do this. Yep. Do it. And I, I'm, look, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'll tell, I'm not pushing you. If you don't want to buy this house, you don't have to buy this house. You don't like anything else, a hundred thousand dollars lower where you feel a little bit better. Right. But you like it. It works. Refi it in six months to a year. Absolutely. But it's always, to me, it's like about the stronghold. If you can physically make these payments happen, and it's everything on your list, like it checks every box, do it. I have to agree wholeheartedly with that. Um, And bringing to the table a couple of statistics, um, there was a Twitter poll that was going around that mentioned 59% of renters plan to buy within the next two years. Um, How, and in that same poll, the same people that took that said that the interest rate was more important to them than the price of the home. You can't change it's, the price. It's, it's like, where and what are they listening to? What are they consuming that is getting them to think bass backwards? Yeah, do a buy down. You, you get some seller concessions for that. Even you know, still, like, so not a buyer's market, but willing to negotiate. Right. We're not changing the price, but we'll give you some closing costs, which will help you with the affordability factor. Yeah. But at the same time, we're focused on the rate, which equates to payment and leaving the equity piece to to just whatever. No Mm -hmm. big deal when it should be. Do you can you afford this payment right now? If so, would you be able to afford it for, let's say, the next five years if nothing changes? Right. Yes. Great. Then let's move forward with this property. Because at the end of the day, you can't go backwards to buy Mm-mm. the home at what it was before. Here's the devil's advocate. What do you say if uh, refinancing extends your loan another 30 years? I, I, get, I, I was on TikTok and yeah. I posted a video and saying about, you know, refinance and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Some guy went on there and saying, oh, you're, that's, that's so retarded. That's going to, you know, extend your loan for another 30 years. So you're going to pay more interest. And I told him, man, if you're taking 30 years to pay your house off, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. You should not take the 30 years. If you're living you. there for 30 years, <laughs> something got exactly. to retarded. I mean, you know? like, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's just not in our culture these days to stay in the home. Matter of fact, the previous uh, tenure in a home, first time home buyer, used to be less than five years. Mm-hmm. It creeped up to eight when they took the statistic during COVID. Well, no shit. It, we're in our homes. We can't do anything. Right. We're, we're not going to sell. Rates are low, et cetera. I have a feeling that we're going to get back to that five year mark in the next couple of years, Mm -hmm. just because that's what we do in this generation. Mm -hmm. This is the largest generation that's buying. Um, We like 
the new change of sceneries. We like to make moves, etc. In addition, we use social media as our everything. And, mm-hmm. and it's sad, but true. So therefore, aren't you trying to keep up with the Joneses type concept? So they're going to continue to uh, leverage and move that equity over. Now, my point here is I took six uh, contracts in the last week. Out of those six, three of them were in first time investors already own a home. They mm-hmm. don't want to sell their home, but they want to get in the investor yeah. pool. And that to me is a, an astonishing figure because I'm not the only one doing loans these days. I would imagine that plenty of folks out there are actually getting on the investor side to combat this institutional thing that's going on. Because the other day, and I brought it up on the last episode, but it had nothing to do with this, but now I can kind of talk about it a little bit more. If you go to any CAD county appraisal and just type in a zip code and just start scrolling, you would be astounded at the amount of LLCs that you see owning Mm -hmm. properties. Oh, yeah. So the layman doesn't look at these types of things. The layman doesn't even know what that means in those scenarios. What that means is the rates are not affecting investors getting in the market. At the end of the day, they believe home prices are going to continue to go up at minimum. They'll be able to cover the rent and it's going to be a long game. So what is initial or what, what it's in actually doing is pushing anybody out of the market that had a chance Mm -hmm. to become a a homeowner, putting them on the sidelines, hoping that prices are going to drop. And what's funny is that you hear, I'm waiting for prices to drop. And then you've got another crew. I'm waiting for interest rates to drop. What if neither of them do? Yeah. You're just going to keep paying rent. Yeah, like, t- t- that's that. I mean, I guess that's what they think. It's sad. It's a sad way to look at it. But and then when I first, I'm, I'm just going to buy another apartment complex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, they can pay it to me. <laughs> and when I when I first started, I remember uh, you and I were having conversation, and you told me, um, you know. Time in the market beats time in the market all the time, Absolutely. every time. So that kind of stuck with me, and that's that's something I try preaching to everybody. You know, it's, as long as you structure it correctly, yep, your time in the market's always going to outweigh it. You know, that t- trying to time it. You, so the people that try to get in the low interest rate, you know, they said, oh, you know, COVID's happening. They were scared for their jobs. What they saw the two point three, they didn't. They saw the prices skyrocket and they yep. didn't jump in the market. Now they're over here. Oh, interest rates are high. I don't want to get in. The prices are high. So. You got you got to be able to educate these people and tell them you know how we could structure. Like you said, there's so much ways to get creative financing, seller concessions, lender concessions. Yep. At times, you know, even realtors are willing to help out at, you know, with their commissions too. So there's a lot you can do to be able to <laughs> right? and take that back. You could delete it out of there. No, right? no, hell no, we don't edit <laughs> nothing. So do you guys believe that it is um, a basic excuse that they're giving due to fear? Or is it a lack of education? I think it's a hundred percent both. Okay. It's, it's a 50, 50 split. I okay. think it's them being uneducated and no matter how hard, I mean, and, and you know, how many of us realtors, right? Brokers are actually educating them. And then the other question is how many of us that are actually educating them? Are they listening to us? Right. right? Cause I feel like right. a lot of stuff goes in one ear and out the other. Cause they know absolutely. They see the news. Mm-hmm. They look at Zillow. They watch modern family and you know, the Phil dumpy thing. And you know, it's, Whatever it is, like whatever. Meanwhile, what, what, I watch Kill Tony, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> but what you know, what I'm saying, but like whatever it is that they're ingesting, yep, that's what they know, and that's it, and they'll Correct. stick by it, no matter how many times I could be like, "Hey, let's meet at my office. Look at all these little trophies here. Here's all my book of lists I've been right. in. Here's all my continuing education. You know, like so. Tan- side tangent. What's the number one designation you think that the public knows? Oof. I mean, you see these realtors that have cards. It's like alphabet soup. It's like G R I A B R A B C A B C. Nobody L-M-O-P. knows. I went okay. I'm. I got a few of those, and I'm like, this is stupid. Like, I keep adding them to Sabor on my business card. I'm like, right. no, I don't put anything on that anymore. I use one C L H M S for Certified Luxury Home Marketing Specialist. There you go. And broker. I went and got my broker's license because I'm like, you. people will literally go and go. Oh, you're a broker. Yep. 
You're not just a realtor. Yeah. Yeah. So I just added that in there. Perception. Yeah. I added that in there and said, okay, you listen to me. So I feel like people listen to me a little bit more because of that. I'm not being like, oh, look at me. But like, it's just the fact that it says that, right? Like you're going to listen to an attorney more than you would like the intern at the law office type thing, right? So (laughs) you you see that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Even though they probably know everything because they're sitting there listening to the attorney. Absolutely. You know, 13 years experience. I got my broker's license in 2020. Okay. And, um, it took eight months to get it. Not No, I, I did 580 hours because I did the bare minimum, right? Yeah. Like I had to do the bare minimum because I didn't want my broker's license, but I just woke up one day and said, I'm getting this. So I had like 500, no, it was 548 hours. I did it the entire month of December 20, 2019, the first week of January. It was done, went to submit everything because I had to do it before April. Mm-hmm. But then COVID came, so it delayed everything. It yeah. took eight months. I've had a friend that just got it the other day. It took 30 days. Like, so, it's, so let me know. ask you, Michael. Are you the broker on record at your brokerage? No. No, there's 1,200 so and getting, some odd yeah. people. At, I'm, getting you know, I'm, at, I'm at Portfolio, which is a, a boutique mm-hmm. brokerage within Keller Williams sure. Heritage. Um, but we're still a part of there. I'm in the office every day. There's right. 1,200 and some people on file. Our broker record, Lisa Munoz. Gotcha. Amazing lady. So, yeah. so I've got a point here. Because I've had folks on the show, and I've seen it on social. I've seen it everywhere. I'm not going to become a broker. It's not worth it to become a broker. I don't want all that responsibility, blah, 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 Mm. blah, 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 Mm. blah, blah. At minimum, if you've been in the industry practicing realtor, I believe, what is it, five years that you have to be? It's four. four, Yeah, it used to be two, and then it doubled. I should have gotten it when it was two. Sure. Because I had enough experience. I didn't, because I'm like I said, I didn't want to do it. But but I truly believe what you said is gospel. Yeah. Because it says broker, you're going to get more business because of the perception of yeah. the layman, yep. the consumer. So at minimum, it costs you X amount of hours, mm-hmm. X amount of money to get your brokerage brokerage broker license, excuse me. At minimum, pro tip, go get your broker's license, put it on your card or on your signature line or your designation or your uh, uh, social media because you don't have to be the broker of record. It just shows your accolade. It yeah. shows your expertise. Absolutely. Yeah, you're, just, uh, you're a broker associate at that point. There you yeah. go. Um, but I don't think people even, and I don't say people, I don't believe realtors even get that concept because they think all of this responsibility comes in way. Yeah, no, you I mean, you're held at a higher standard. Of you know, course, if you go, yeah. if you go under a trek review or mm-hmm. for a complaint, they're going to hold you at a higher standard. But like, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you know what you're doing. You're not going to get to that point. Right. Absolutely. I mean, look, there's always going to be that client or that person or that lead who called in, you yep. know, whatever that you m- pissed off for some sort of reason, right? Mm-hmm. Be- because you didn't call her back within 30 minutes. It was an hour or him or whatever. Or she, him, her thing, you know, whatever it is, right? You, 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 <laughs> alphabet soup. You're not going to know who you're going to piss off or whatever. Anyone can file a complaint, right? Yes. But like, you're still going to be held to a higher standard, but you know better too. So just, just use your experience, use your, use your designation of being a broker and just be smart about it, right? Damn it. Do the right thing. But period. I, but I feel like more people and not saying, Hey, when I got my broker's license, people just like started staring at me no. and just like listening more. But I feel like. It, it took relationships I had prior sure, to where they would say, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but, but, you know, now after a few years of having it, you know, I've got a client and he's like, just make it happen. That's right. They I trust want it. You. I want it under this price. Make it yep. happen. Oh, yep. Call me when it's done. I'll sign it. Boom. You know, like. And that, okay. that, that speaks volumes yeah. just to that designation. Right. You know? So I've got two more things to, to, to chat about. Uh, I want to get you guys' opinion on this statement, this quote right here. It says, a house is never going to pay you. You're going to pay the house and keep paying the house. Is Adding it? that uh, the four walls of your family home are never going to make you rich. If you look at Elon Musk or Warren Buffett and ask them how they got wealthy, none of them mention their house. Of course, your, your personal house is not going to make you rich. Your investments on real estate is going to pay your personal house. No, I, I, I would <laughs> Honestly, I would even go as far as to say that even your personal house, at least at some point right. when it gets paid off, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. even though you still have to pay taxes and insurance if you want to make sure that Still's your property is good, you're now allowing cash flow that would have gone towards rent or something mm-hmm. else to be put back into your pocket. In addition, you've got another nest egg that you can tap in 80% of its equity if you still qualify, et cetera, right. to leverage, 
to fall back on to what have you. Um, I mean, I can go down this. I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Yeah, I mean, look, so I bought my house that we're in right now. We rented for a year after we got married, my wife and I, because we didn't know where we wanted to go, right? So I sold my house in Bernie. We moved to Leon Springs, rented over there for a while. It was a great deal. Way too big of a house, but it was on the market, nice condition, great, great price. And it was sort of close where we wanted to be, you know, at least half in town, half not. But it was it was a good deal off Bernie Stage Road and did that for a year until we found it. That got out, went into an apartment because I was like, well, I don't want to stay here. It's really too much house, this and that. But like, where are we going to go? Right. So did the apartment for eight months only because it was like the lease is up. I don't want to extend to another year because we're trying to find something. But d- doing this every day, I'm the most picky person, especially when I'm in like these one, two, three, four, five million dollar houses. Which, yeah. I mean, I can't do that right now. But <laughs> but like it took us eight months where my wife was like, just pick Pull something. Yeah, yeah. Like my daughter was born. And we had her in the apartment for like a month. And I was like, okay, now it's go time. I just picked it. Like I showed up to the open house with a contract just after seeing it. Let's go. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Right. So it's the house we're in now. But like that house was the best decision I made, even though it took a while to make it. I feel like maybe it just happened when it was supposed to. But the house has over doubled what I bought it for. Right. I owe like a quarter of what it's worth of my mortgage. So to say that like, the house is never going to pay me. Mm-hmm. No, no. I'll tell you when it's going to pay me. It's going to pay me when I sell it Yep. Mm-hmm. and buy my new house. Because look here, I've saved up money for a down payment, mm-hmm. right? I'm going to put 20% down, whatever it is, or unless I can create a finance. You know, we figure that out, right? Because sure. a million things can happen. But I'm now going to get all this extra money mm-hmm. in equity that I've been paying on. At $2,000 a month, I've been paying on this stuff now, where my new payment, I know, is probably going to be around $6,000, $7,000 a month, right? It's going to be a much bigger house, much different zip code, you know, neighborhood. But I just got all that money for free. In my mind, I just got all that money for yep. free. I could have been paying rent. Yep. And it just gone away, right? Poof, gone. Yeah, that's poof, right. Gone. At least I'm writing off my my um, interest. Yep. I'm paying. I'm writing off all this stuff, you know, home improvements, whatever I can do. Uh, you know, it's benefited me along the way. Yeah, he's true that it doesn't pay me every month. Right. My apartment pay me every month. Yeah. My rental home off Fort and Bandera pay me yep. every month. It's not huge numbers, but they're paying me. My beach house pays me per month. Yep. A lot higher than the other ones because that's being VRBO you and Airbnb. You know, yeah. Like the statement's wrong. Now, that was Grant Cardone, right? I was, you yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So now this statement, and you stole my little segue. <laughs> now- this statement was made by Grant Cardone, who built his wealth on commercial real estate. On real estate, yeah. But your house doesn't pay you, but you should pay Grant, right. a rent. so right. he can buy properties, yeah. and you can get like a, you know, like a, like a, um, Not even a residual of like thirty five dollars yep. a month. Yeah. So yeah, you, here, here's your thirty five dollars so a month. So it, it, it kind of full circles this whole concept of what the media is spewing about a crash in twenty twenty four. And folks that built their wealth, Warren Buffett, where'd he build his wealth, guys? Uh, was his Real estate. Complex, yeah. Real complex, estate. Yeah. Um, Elon Musk, totally different. He built his wealth with fucking genius, okay? Yeah. Taking risks, yeah. leveraging, mm-hmm. doing things and creating things that we needed that were not available. But yeah, and he still is. But he's still dipping into real estate. Isn't he building like those little smart home things, or little tiny homes in yes, Austin or something like that? Absolutely. So, I mean, he, he even stepped, he built his Started fortune. a whole city. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then stepped into it, right? But all, all of his plants, all of his warehouses, all that stuff. All of it. All real estate may be owned owns. by the LLC, but yeah. still yeah. owns the real estate. Yeah. So, to this point of full circle, I'm wondering if this is a mass upper level people pulling the strings, creating a narrative that is creating more fear for renters to continue to sit on the sidelines while they continue to gobble up real estate. Because what we're seeing trend-wise and going back to the BCAD, looking up the LLC concept, investors have not stopped purchasing. Institutions have not stopped purchasing. Your Vanguards, your Black Rocks are mm-hmm. still purchasing in droves, single-family residents. Um, and we're having bills that are coming out. Will they get passed? Probably not, but they're at least attempting and bringing it to the forefront that, Hey guys, there's an issue here and it's your affordability in what you can actually Mm -hmm. make out of your life for the future. But yet we're seeing all of the scare tactics come in way of 
that's it's not going to pay you. Well, no, I work for a living, right? Mm-hmm. That that's what pays me, and then I spend my money. Where where do I put it? At least I'll put it in something that pays me back versus a savings account right. that's going to give me uh, pennies on the dollar, if even that. Because you've got this institutional concept, and it it it, it freaks me out a little bit, yeah. simply because if we are not wise enough the renters, the folks on the sidelines, to see what's happening. It's not just institutions that are jumping into this pool. Mm -hmm. Your average homeowner is now going, hmm, I can afford this. This makes sense. How do I build some wealth? Hey, Mark, what do I qualify for if I go and buy another home Maybe a second home, beach house, maybe a, a, a duplex, quadruplex. What does that look like? And the conversations that I'm having with these folks are incredibly inspirational. And I wish I could record every Zoom that I have with them to show it to the public. But for some odd reason, they probably wouldn't even watch unless I titled it Crash 2024. <laughs> yeah, put a cool thumbnail pic on it, like, yeah, yeah house falling on, the, on your client. Yeah, right. something like that, yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's our job to be able to combat that legacy media stuff situation. It's our job to put that information out there and get in front of these people, you know. Um, most of my business, I mean, 90% of my business came from Instagram this yeah. past year, and it was amazing. I just put out a couple videos and stuff, and they weren't even informational, but when, once I got those people, I was able to educate, and they didn't, they weren't aware of all these other right. things they can do to be able to acquire a home or a second home investment. Right. whatever the case was so it's i think it's our job as professionals in this industry to be able to combat all those narratives out there with the you know the mark crash is gonna yep. crash is happening and 100%. all that stuff not only that i hardly don't think that it's a crash is gonna happen here at least in san antonio or maybe texas you know because you got a lot of people running national comps now yeah they, they got what can my daughter get me in new york or california what can you get me in San Antonio? You mm-hmm. you bring a one point two million dollars over here to San Antonio, you can get a real nice house mm-hmm. with, oh, some yeah. pro- with some land. California, you're getting a shack, you know. If that, so, if that, yeah. And not a lot of people can afford with all the state taxes and all that stuff over there, so they're coming over here, you know. So you mentioned, and this is the last kind of question topic uh, of this episode because we're doing damn good on time. Mm-hmm. Affordability, I believe it's going to become a an issue that. Um, it doesn't necessarily go backwards once it's at that point. You're now going to need to pool your money together with family to buy a house uh, to create that same effect that mm-hmm. you could have had with a single uh, mm-hmm. income or a dual income. What what do we do? What do they do? I mean, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep financing properties. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so we, we, we've got to change the way, you know, social media has done this to I sure. think, most of America and the world now where it's, it's created this false sense of what I need, what mm-hmm. I deserve, all this other stuff. And, you know, I, I saw this thing the other day where it was either the news or someone, someone's local account was like bashing on Lennar. I think it was Lennar who's mm-hmm. building these now like tiny homes. Oh, yeah. And they're a hundred thousand dollars, but look, but think about it. Like, okay, if I'm only qualified for one to one fifty, mm-hmm. I'm just proud of you for going to get qualified, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, you're not renting, you're not doing this, you're putting the money towards your future for your family, your kids, or whatever. Or if you're a, a new married couple or single guy or yep. girl, whatever, and you can qualify for this house, go buy this tiny ass Lennar. That's yeah. right. That's right. Because look, you're gonna live there until you can move up. Mm-hmm. You you may. Um, want to keep it because you got equity in it now. Let's say it's five years from now, right? Now the house is worth two fifty. Mm-hmm. You paid a hundred to hundred and fifty. You now have a hundred thousand equity in the house. Pull it out. Right. Pull, pull a HELOC, do whatever. And I'm not I'm not saying like don't take this. I'm not a financial advisor. But just based on experience, pull the money out, mm-hmm. go buy yourself a new house, combine that with whatever down payment you saved up, rent it out. Leverage. Absolutely. Leverage it. You know, there's always gonna be someone that needs needs a house. Absolutely. So you don't rent because you want to move up. Right. But someone's going to need to rent, right? They may be getting back on their feet or they may be just starting out. They're 10 years younger than you and they're in the same, you know, they're they're walking through your footsteps, not Correct. knowing you, but they're going through your same life plan. Rent it out to them. Well, I mean, you've or got- Or seller finance it to them. There you them. go. You become know, the bank. Do, become the bank. You know, mm-hmm. make your own rate up. And I'm <laughs> people think, oh, I'm 12%. No. Make it L- like, reasonable. Yeah. Like, and, and like even in this market we're in now, I've done two seller finances lately mm-hmm. on listings of mine. And we've been under 
where the banks are at right yep. now, you know, because they're still above where they were. And I mean, they're paid off now. And or whatever chances it are is. you're going to get more equity because they put more down. Yeah, you're willing to get money. more out of your house mm-hmm. because they're like, hey, you know, my payment's this and that and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not as bad. It's under where Prime is right. right now. And it's a good deal. And so we've sold those. They're happy. You know, they may pay it off in a year, two, three years, but they won't reach their five-year balloon. If they do, they'll pay it then. Right. But it gets them into something, right? Well, I mean, I, I think that Lennar is on to something, and I believe you're going to see others follow suit mm-hmm. because looking up at the board here, 99% of U.S. average homeowners cannot afford to live in the average home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a niche for that product. Absolutely. So if there, I mean, these companies are big companies, they do their research. Maybe they know something that mm-hmm. we don't know, or maybe they know exactly what we know, yeah. which is there needs to be more affordable housing and prices aren't going to go backwards. So therefore it needs to be created. Yeah. Um, and if there's a niche for it, if there's a profit margin for it, they're going to fulfill that. Yeah. You know, capitalism became this dirty, scary word and it, yeah. dude, it turns me on more Thanks, than anything else, man. Mob. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> go open like, up yeah, this. Cap- capitalism. You know, like <laughs> we're it, we're all going to better ourselves by yes. following that kind of model, right? Absolutely. Like, and, and I know we all believe in that to some yeah. extent, whether some more, some less, but still in, in believe in that fundamental, basically. Absolutely. And that's the only way we're going to get out of any of this, right? Yeah. Like, prices are going to go up, whatever. That's normal. They were going up before, mm-hmm. and you know, in the eighties when people were paying eighteen, nineteen, whatever Interest. percent, right? That's right. They were still doing it. And then someone may go, "Yeah, but the house is only fifty thousand." But it was all relevant too. They weren't making, you know, three hundred thousand dollars in their manufacturing job. They're making right. forty thousand, right, or twenty thousand or less, <laughs> or less yep. right? I mean, so it's like, it's all relevant. I know I've seen some other bullshit where they're like the the three hundred thousand is a new one hundred thousand, and it may be right, whatever. Like right, this for is the situation you, you're yeah, in. Yeah, that's on Instagram, right? So you got to believe everything you see on the internet, okay? But like. <laughs> It's it's all relevant to something, right? So like, go out and make two hundred thousand. I know that sounds so easy, no, right? No. It's not, but like, but find something. Do a side hustle. Do something like this. Like, better yourself. Take take five years and work your ass off. Absolutely. And to better yourself, get into a better position. Because once you can get into that better position, whether it's five years, ten years, or you luck out and do it in one, mm-hmm. the rest of it just falls into place. Not that you're going to have to stop working or doing that. You keep working hard. But the higher you get on that ladder, the easier the hard work becomes. I know that sounds contradicting, no, that sounds but it's like, damn it's, good. It's, yes. it's exactly what it is. Yep. You know, you got to, everyone's afraid to work and do all this stuff, or I don't want to go in, or I got to have this, or I'm going to hold out for, I was watching this movie and the husband hadn't worked in a couple of years and she's like, well, he's really holding out for, oh no, it was uh National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, <laughs> Cousin Eddie. <laughs> yeah. So well, he hasn't worked in years. He's holding out for a management position. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> no experience. Dude, I would have been running fries, graduated from fries to making the burgers, went from burgers yes. to drive through assistant to assistant to the assistant to the regional manager. Yeah. And I would have went, you know, all Me- the way up through there. Meanwhile, you know? he's the first one to go grab the boss yeah. and bring his ass to the actual party. Exactly. And, and he goes Dude. back to people. People can yeah. what other people think he about He had that, initiative. You know? He yeah. had initiative when he kidnapped that guy. But <laughs> but like look at look, even on one of our favorite shows, Dwight Schrute. Yeah. I love that. What guy. did Dwight do in the office? He bought the building, dude. Yeah. There you dude, go. Dude, he bought the fucking building. That's right. How'd he do that? His side hustle. Matter of fact, Jay Z says his beats, um, beat farm and B and B side. He had two side hustles all out of the same, all out of the That's same right. location. That's right. You know? And uh one of do Jay-Z's it, dude. quotes said Stack the shelves Luminati. until oh. you're stacking for yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, you've got to put in the work. It doesn't happen overnight. Not a single one of us no, dude. became where we are, and we're not where we want to be even, but are still grinding every single mm-hmm. day. Uh, gentlemen, that was a fantastic discussion. I had a good time. Uh, I, I think good that time. was uh, a lot of insight. Is there anything else that you guys want to add before we close this out? No, definitely. When we talk about Cardone or yep. Chris Cohn or whatever, do yourself a favor, get on Instagram and look up baller busters. Best thing I can give you right there now. Best go. piece of advice I can give you aside from buy more real estate. There Boom. you go. Yeah. Invest in real estate, invest in your, your, you know, your wealth, uh, your future generation as well. And just don't listen to that media. I Speak like to it. a professional, you know, I mean? like Speak it to a professional. All right. Well, gentlemen, again, I want to thank you for uh, uh, giving us all of the wealth of information that you have in this uh, discussion. It, very insightful. And hopefully people can pull out different uh, uh, nuggets that they can utilize in their everyday life. Um, for those of you listening, uh, for those of you tuning in, um, I've got a couple of tips for you as we lead into 2024. First tip. 
if you are in a position that you're able to buy um, and the payment is right and you can afford that payment, uh, make sure that you are looking at a 30-year loan. And the reason why I say that is and plenty of people out there are going to go, well, you're going to pay so much interest over 30 years. As we discussed Safety in here, net. you're not going to keep the damn thing for over 30 years or even close to it. So if you want to pay it off in 15 years, double up your payment, y'all. It is yep. that make simple. A, make a payment every two weeks. Or, right. or, or, yeah. or what is it? Cut your payment in half and, and right. just make one every two weeks? Like They call it killing the P. Yeah. My uncle taught me that back in the day. Shout out, Uncle Ernie. Um, we called it... The, I, I use that, but for something different. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, the second thing to this is lock in a fixed rate. Stop listening to all the hogwash about this adjustable rate mortgage crap. Uh, rates are going to come down, so you might as well get an AP. Dude, you're saving pennies, and the risk of having an adjustable rate mortgage is drastic. Let's say, and I'm going to tell you exactly why I don't promote uh, adjustable rate mortgages. Let's say you're going to save a half a percent uh, every payment, et cetera, because you went with an adjustable rate mortgage. Well, let's say rates are dropping. For some odd reason, there is a risk that you may not qualify when the time comes to refinance. And then shit hits the fan and you're out of luck looking at all of these additional alternative options. Don't put yourself in that situation. Stay conservative um, and make sure it's a 30-year fixed mortgage, no matter what program you go with. Um, the last thing is refinance when it makes sense. Everybody wants to refinance right away when rates drop, but you're only adding money to your actual mortgage and stretching it out. Um the concept of refinancing should always make financial sense, and you're going to have plenty of lenders blowing up your inbox as soon as the rates drop by a half a point. Hold off, guys, because then when it drops another half a point or another quarter of a point, you're going to turn around and refinance again. This is not a refinance game. This is about saving money. Um, this is about making right financial decisions. So get with a lender that's going to be honest and show you the figures and comparative uh, to what it could be. Um, because we're all in this to make a buck, but at the end of the day, the true lenders are the ones that can actually show and stand behind their work. Mm -hmm. Um, and the last thing that I leave you with guys is make sure you understand the concept of crawl before you walk, walk before you run and run before you jump off that cliff and fly. Other than that, um, again, thank you guys for joining appreciate me on this episode. Us, thank you. Make oh, thank sure. you for the invite. Thanks for FaceTiming me while I was in the shower this morning, Hell by the way. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's scared to do that. Odd. <laughs> Just ball out. <laughs> but, right. Balls out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> guys, that being said, make sure to like, subscribe, share this with a friend. You never know who's going to need it at the time, but uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Later.